In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we'll continue our study in the Bible, in the Gospel of St. Mark, continuing in chapter 8. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. You know, the Lord used to say his words in parables. He used to tell them meanings um, by this way. But actually, their thoughts went into the exact meaning of the leaven and the bread. And this happened just after the miracle of the seven loaves and a few days before another miracle of the five loaves. That's why the Lord said, they reasoned among themselves, saying, it's because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? Do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? You know, the Lord, as if he was hurt by their way of thinking. You still think of the bread, you, you're still anxious about when to eat and how to eat. You didn't understand me yet. I always say the meaning in parables. I'm using the words of the Lord, of the world, but in um, a symbolic meaning. But actually, they still think the way we think. They're anxious about what to eat and when to eat. That's why when they reasoned among themselves, saying, it's because we have no bread, the Lord was actually um, hurt. And he said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Why do you think this way? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? You know, by saying so, we, we should perceive the meaning of the word of God. We should understand the exact meaning. We should focus on the, how to live the word of God, not only enjoying the parables or the stories given in the Bible, but we should stick to the exact meaning. Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? So by hardening our heart, we will not understand the word of God. Having eyes, do you not see? As if he's saying, did not you see how many miracles concerning food I made the last days? And having ears, do you not hear how many teaching I was saying do not care for what to eat and what to drink. And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? So it comes now, the meaning of these fragments. He ordered them to keep the fragments just to remember. So when he asked them how many, they could answer him saying, they said to him, 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, seven. So they stand before him like lazy students who did not answer exactly the meaning he meant. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? So we need to understand. We need to listen carefully. We need to understand that never ever think of food and drink. Just think of your heart. Think how to obey the word of God. 
focus on your spiritual life and everything around will be given as gift for you. Then he came to Pisidia, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Again, they expected that he will just put his hand on his eyes as usual, or just spell some words out of his mouth, and this man will be healed. But again, he took the man aside, and he walked with him away from the crowd. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And imagine this, that he took the hand of the man because the man couldn't see. And he was walking with him as friends, as his partner. So the man felt the warmth of the love of the Lord before the miracle. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything, you know, just he spit on uh, his eyes. And then he asked the man, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. This is strange. Usually the miracles happened once. I mean, it, 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 the miracle can happen in one minute. But in this case, it goes into stages. The first one, he could see just people like trees walking. Maybe because he was afraid of men. That's why by healing his eyes, he just saw people like trees, large and high and um, scary. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Also, you know, this meaning that our spiritual growth will not come in a minute or in one stage. We, day after day, we grow in the Lord and we can see better. We can see things much better than before by sticking to the Lord by his hand. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. Again, the Lord always say, Do not tell anybody, just to keep his personal relationship with those who made for them the miracles, and also not to mention the miracles here and there, because he need the people to listen to his teaching rather more than taking his miracles. Now Jesus and his disciples went out to the towns of Thedere, Philippi, and on the road he asked his disciples, saying to them, Who do men say that I am? You know, we all know that the Lord knows quite well what people are saying about him. But he wants the disciples to say what they expect out of the people around. They listen to the crowd and they, can, they could see uh, what's him to them. So they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Then he strictly warned them that they should tell no one about him. You know, by this discussion, he wanted them to know him quite well and do not be affected by the sayings of the people here and there. The people could not see the truth. They imagined that he is just Elijah because Elijah did not die or one of the prophets may be raised up out of the death, or they, some of them believe that the Baptist, John the Baptist, may uh, come again and preach. But the truth was that he is the Messiah, he is the Christ, he is the Lord. And when they all um, said so, 
he strictly warned them and they should as they should no one tell no one about him because time did not come yet for crucifixion and people should know him by themselves they should touch the truth by their hearts and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days ride again when they came to the truth that he is the Christ he is the Messiah coming to our world to save us then he revealed another truth that he is the, uh, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected and be killed and after three days ride again he spoke this word openly then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him so although Peter said that you are the son of God you are the Messiah you are the Christ but by taking the second step the second truth that the Messiah should be killed before uh, for the salvation of everybody and he will rise again St. Peter rebuked him did not accept this he wanted him at the Jewish people believe in the Messiah as king of this world they do not accept him as being killed or hurt by anyone so St. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him but when he had turned around and looked at his disciples he rebuked Peter saying get behind me Satan for you are not mindful of the things of God but the things of men you know St. Peter took him aside and told him please Lord don't say so you will not die we are going to die just to for you you are not the one to be killed so he saw the eyes of his disciples looking at him and St. Peter strangely as if saying we all love you Lord why he is the one saying so so he rebuked Peter back and said to him you are talking like Satan because this meaning is not from the Lord this kind of words coming from Satan he is the one who stands again at the cross who, who, he is the one who cared much not for the salvation of human being get behind me Satan for you are not mindful of the things of God but the things of men you know when we think how to please men we might not plead in God when we focus on the interests of people we may be um, breaking the law of our Lord so we should think carefully when we please anybody around not to break the order of the Lord when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also he said to them whoever desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me the third truth that we people we disciples of the Lord we should follow his steps we should believe him as Christ as Savior we should believe in his crucifixion and dying on the cross for our salvation and the third step we should follow his steps we should deny ourselves and be ready to carry on the cross to take up the cross after him and you know he said take up his cross that's meaning that's this means that each of us has his own cross you might have cross of pain tribulations a, a cross of prayer and fasting cross of obeying the order of the Lord but we should take up our cross and follow the Lord for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will 
save it. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Those who care for their body, for their life, this life on earth will lose it finally. But for those who loaded their life for the salvation of many, for the sake of the kingdom of God, they will have it in the eternity. And he said also, whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospel's will, will save it. So for those who live their life just preaching the word of God and delivering the message of the Lord to everybody, they will save their life forever. For what will it profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You know, one have, has only one life here. And if I lose my life here, I cannot gain it again or get another one. So to gain your life, you should stick to the word of God and preach the word of God and listen to the word of God and do not listen much to the word of man. And also he said, um, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed. You know, many Christians, unfortunately, are ashamed of the word of God. They are ashamed of the cross of the Lord. They do not, do not think that the cross is our fortune, our uh, advantage, because on the cross we got our salvation. So we need not to be ashamed of the word of God. We need to pray the Lord and we need to serve him by preaching his word. When he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, you know, nowadays we do not see the glory of the servants of the Lord. But one day when he comes on the cloud with his holy angels in his full glory, we can see the glory of his servants. Chapter 9. And he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. Because they saw him as a normal man um, living normally with the people around, they couldn't imagine how much glory waiting for him while coming on the clouds on the last day. That's why he told them that one day you will see my glory. And among you, some will see this glory very soon before they die. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured be before them. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white, like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. You know, this transfiguration happened on the mountain, and he chose just three of them, Peter, James, and John, to show them his glory, because he was mentioning his glory coming on the last day with his holy angels uh, for condemnation of the whole world, but they couldn't imagine how glorious he is. That's why he took sample of them, Peter, James, and John, and was transfigured before them. And this transfiguration, you know, means that this is our future look. Uh, he was shining in white garment, 
such as no laundry on earth can whiten them. And also he was talking to Elijah and Moses. Elijah uh, did not die actually, but he was taken in a fiery um, car, strange one. And Moses was the man of the Old Testament. Moses mentioned many prophets, prophecies about the Lord and Elijah was a powerful man full of passion for the salvation of his people. So they both worshipped the Lord and they were talking with him about his crucifixion and salvation of people. They were talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, Rabbi means my teacher, it's good for us to be he th here and let us make three tabernacles, one of you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. You know, they had two different uh, feelings. They felt afraid, but they also felt happy. They were happy seeing the Lord in his glory, and they were very happy seeing also the prophets, Moses and Elijah. And most probably they knew Moses from his look and Elijah from his garment, his clothes. And also while listening to the discussion happened between the Lord and Elijah and Moses, they could know the character of each. And St. Peter asked the Lord, saying that it's good for us to be here, as if saying, why we shouldn't start our eternal life now? It's better to stay for long looking at that. So this means that our eternal life is full of happiness, full of glory. We will see the Lord shining in white. We will see his prophets, and now we will see also his disciples. So we are looking for this minute. And the cloud came and overshadowed them. And the voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Suddenly when they had looked around, they saw no one anymore, but only did this with themselves. So the cloud came as if they were all covered into the inside the cloud and they were, they were like one in the Lord. And after the cloud, they couldn't see anybody but only the Lord. And also the voice came out of the cloud. It's the voice of God the Father saying, this is my beloved son, just hear him. So the witness of heaven, came out of heaven saying, this is my beloved son. The son of God became the son of man. So the son of men can be also sons of God. So by hearing him, following him, we can enjoy his eternal life and looking for um, this eternal company with the prophets and the disciples. Now as they came down from the mountain, he commanded them that they should tell no one the thing they had seen, till the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the word to themselves, questioning what the risen from the dead meant. Because, you know, they did not accept the idea of being killed by the Jew or, and Romans. They couldn't accept the idea that the Lord will leave them at, at one minute. They couldn't understand the meaning of the rising up from the dead because it never happened before uh, their eyes. And they asked him saying, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Then he answered and told them, indeed Elijah is coming first and restores all things and how is it written concerning the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be treated with content? But I say to you that Elijah has also come. 
and they did not they did to him whatever they wished as it is written of him so he was meaning that the uh, saint john the, Pro, the the baptist is the one symbolizing or or coming after elijah and he came already and they did him whatever they did so elijah came and now christ came for our salvation glory to god amen